and welcome to My Security TV and our Tech and Sec Weekly. My name is Chris Cubbage. I'm the executive editor with My Security Media. Today we're joined by Thomas Fickenshire, who is the regional director for Australia and New Zealand with CyberArk. It's great to have Thomas back. They've just held their Impact 2022 event, their world tour here in Sydney, uh, talking to clients, particularly in what is keeping them awake at night. So without further ado, Thomas Fickenshire. Welcome back to our Tech and Sec Weekly. Thanks for having me. Thomas, it's been a while, it's been a, maybe a couple of years since we've had you on, uh, and you've just off, very much off at the back of Impact 2022, uh, was held just the other day here in Sydney. Uh, Impact says a lot, but uh, we've also got identity security and access control, uh, which is the area or your domain. Impact 22, what was it about and what are the, some of the key takeaways? Yeah. Yeah, we had a great event on Wednesday, um, full house. Um, it was really good to see a strong turnout. Unsurprisingly, um, given the latest news in the markets, yeah. a lot of people are joining us. So what, we, what we've been trying to do, we've been trying to elevate this whole cybersecurity topic into the business domain. And I have, in my, in my perspective, I have a very strong opinion on that because I don't think we're, we're gonna win this current, for lack of a better word, war against adversaries if we don't bring the business people into the conversation. So we tied the cybersecurity topic to the digital transformation topic. Um, and we were all talking about transformation and the impact of transformation. And there are there are many, many impacts when, when organizations embark on digital transformation initiatives. So I'll give an example. Um, I've been talking to many C-level executives about what they, what they actually mean by digital transformation. And they say, well, we develop new software. And we, we're trying to release applications for, for our customers because we want to have a better engagement, the ability to understand what they want, to tailor the offerings, uh, to have better experiences, but also in in-house for employee experiences. And that's a great initiative. The problem is if your software development, if your code goes wrong and you have certain backdoors in that software code, then you open the door for, for attacks and that can backfire. So on the one hand side, as a business, you want to be fast in the market and, and look at an opportunity. But then if you have a breach, it sets you back. And research shows that post breach, you, you lose one in four customers. So, and that's an impact that you don't want to have. It's just an example of, of digital transformation that comes with the unintended consequences. So we, around impact, we, we talked a lot about that. All sorts of scenarios of transformation and then how the cybersecurity play into that. We had a fantastic uh, MC with Anders Sommer Nielsen, who was, was a researcher in that space and a futurist. That was the main main theme. And maybe one more comment. We have a term at CyberArk. When, when it comes to these consequences or impacts, we're talking about cybersecurity debt. So all of that transformation work builds up a level of cybersecurity debt that needs to be tackled and, and addressed. And I think that was the main theme for the event. With the futurist Anders, uh, what were some of the key takeaways? I always like uh, hearing from futurists. Anything that stood out for you and in a cybersecurity context, if you can? Yeah, yeah, he's a fantastic guy and he, he was very um, uh, thought provoking, I would, I would call it, um, because he brings the, the humanist element into the conversation as well. Um, so he talks a lot and gives a lot of examples about positive impact of digital transformation. I mean, there's so many of them. It's, think about healthcare. Think about even transport systems, but if if it goes wrong, it goes wrong very, very badly. And regardless how you see that, there's always a human element in all of this that needs to be kept. So he, he, he says, there is, "I'm a futurist, but also a traditionalist." <laughs> so, so take an example: if you if you rely on robotics, and the robots become learning machines, that's perfectly fine. But if the data feeds, the data sets that the robotics are trained on have a bias then all of a sudden the robotic behavior could actually be um, dis discriminatory, right? So it discriminates certain groups of people. So for that, you need an oversight. You need a human being to oversight that and actually modify that. That's the human side of, of, of elements. Other elements is climate change. You know, if, if, you, if you look at the elements of, of digital transformation, how traffic flow works, how you can save a lot of petrol, that's fantastic. And the humans actually can direct it in a, in a way it's intended, which is really saving energy and making sure we do something for climate change. So he gave a lot of these examples and he said, let's, let's get from the repetitive and mundane to the more meaningful work. And that's where humans want to go. 
at the same time take the robot out of the of the humans and really focus on what humans are good at. Um, so he gave a lot of these examples, and I think it was very thought provoking and fantastic to hear. Nice. I'm, I'm a more of an optimistic pessimist, I say, and um, so it's one of those things. But you need to be when you're in the security uh, sort of domain. What is keeping the CTOs and the CIOs and the CISOs awake at night? What were your customers kind of saying uh, at these events? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, even the CEOs. So I'm not sure whether you've seen Ross McEwen from NAP coming out this week and saying, you know, that's the topic that keeps CEOs awake at night, not just the CTOs, the CIOs, the CISOs. That's a good thing, I suppose. And uh, finally, yeah. <laughs> finally, it's taken a while. Um, so tech and bank like NAP, he, he cited that they have on average per month, 50 million attacks, 50 million across their digital channels. It's an insane number. So you can see that like, everyone wants to attack a bank. But I spoke to some other people, like that's a good example is a, is a CISO from a, um, a slightly smaller bank, but he said, well, we, what we try to do, we try to inform our board to say it will happen. But what we're doing, we're trying to reduce the blast radius. That's how he, how he, how he said it. Yeah. And he said, I'm not going to my business leaders and say, Mr. CFO, I, I tell you where your assets are. I tell you where your financial information sits. I tell you where your customer information sits. And I tell you how it's protected today. But you need to let me know whether you believe that's enough. I tell you the consequences are if it's being breached, but I'm going to get your endorsement. And, and I think what CISO CTOs and, and um, the, the technical domain wants, they want to actually have better endorsement and commitment from the business side to really take that seriously. That keeps them up at night and what they i mean everyone doesn't want to have a breach if, if you're in a situation like many of those high profile companies right now you would be an absolute nightmare so they want to defend against that they want to do the right thing but i think they need endorsement from the business people as well and in terms of your focus and how you work with customers how does that all sort of tie together and and how do the this was a world tour as well right so i take it you get these themes uh, consistently around the world, we do. We do. So it's not just an. I mean, it's not just an Australian problem. It's a. It's a problem that exists everywhere. Um, I think urgency is one topic that that we we address a lot. You you can you can be overwhelmed by the complexity and overwhelmed by how many problems you have to resolve. But if you if you do to, your circles, you never get started. You're not going to get on top of it. So. How do you do that? That's a that's a big topic for us. We have conversations about risk management. Where's the biggest risk in your business? Try to tie it tie it down into certain use cases and let's get started because it's going to be a program. It's never going to be a set and forget project. It needs to be a program. So use case definitions. Where are your biggest assets? Most important assets that if disrupted could be really uh, detrimental. And let's get started there and then work out a program for for your organization. Um, that's a theme that we pursue everywhere. Um, we, as I said, we call it cybersecurity debt. Let's identify where it is and then prioritize it accordingly. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of uh, discussions around access control. I mean, when we talk about these recent breaches, they're obviously accessing huge data sets. Yeah. Um, what's the outlook for CyberArk? Anything new on your platform? Yeah. So we have, uh, I mean, I think we spoke about that before. We've moved from, um, um, a PAM model, a few focus on privilege access management into a broader definition of identity security. Yeah. So that allows us to pretty much look at any identity in an organization, whether that's used by humans or whether it's actually used by machines. So the non-human side, machine to machine communication. And we can also go look at the ecosystem around the company and say, who is third party, who has, who has access into your, into your organization. So we've, we've, we've looked at that and we defined that in the security as a platform, we have shared services, but what we can do is we can say, if you traditional PAM user, a system administrator, we've got you. If you're someone who's more a sensitive user, who's a business or uh, sits in the business department, like finance or HR, but you're doing critical work and you have access to sensitive information, you're almost a privileged user. We have slightly different controls, but we're going to look at you as well. If you're just a normal workforce user who has probably more less consequential access, we have multi-factor authentication, single sign-on. We have that as well. If you come from outside and you're third party, 
we want to make sure who you are. We want to actually restrict your access for only the purpose that you need it for how long you need it. That's our vendor PAM um, environment. Sure. And if you sit in software development and you're a software developer and you need to write code very quickly, we also want to make sure that that code is correct. So we've got a very broad spectrum of solutions for different parts of the business. At the end of the day, it's all about wrapping the right levels of, of security around the identities and do that in a most simplistic, it's not simple, but it's simplistic and easy to use way with uh, leveraging shared services. So that's that's the platform. Yeah, the vendor platform sounds very interesting. We've had a lot on third party risk management uh, and assessments. Is that are these modulized as well? They you know the customers can roll these out uh, in phases. Yeah, so they are they're, they're, they're standalone. They're they're separate modules, but they do leverage. So they have a connection to each other in terms of benefiting from each other. But you can actually um, pursue them uh, in the, independently. So I'll give you an example. If you if it's an organization that's what I call highly outsourced, take an airport. They have lots of external services coming in every day, like a Sydney airport or Melbourne airport. So from, for for them, the biggest risk is who is actually in my network. What, the, what are they doing every day? How much access do they have? So they can absolutely start on that side and focus on that particular topic first before they go into the inner workings of their system administration layer and look at other parts of their business. Um, and as I said, underneath their shared services, when I say shared services, the vaulting mechanism, the reporting mechanism, the artificial intelligence, the threat analytics, that's all a shared service. So any module benefits from that shared service. Great. So 2023, it's fast approaching, uh, which is scary enough in itself. What's the outlook for 2023 and any other events coming up in Asia Pacific? Yeah, so we in Australia, I think in particular, critical infrastructure is a topic um, of the day. Um, you've, you've followed the government's changes. They obviously have uh, strengthened the SOCI Act. They've lifted from four industries to 11 industries as a definition of critical infrastructure sectors. They have recently nominated 82 assets in Australia as so-called SONs, systems of national significance. Yeah. I mean, we can we can argue that would be energy companies, it would be water treatment facilities, it would be healthcare providers, it would be telecommunications organizations. So I think from an outlook perspective, we've got to get that right around these critical assets first and make sure we defend those ones. Because if we lose our clear drinking or clean drinking water if we if we have disruptions of major healthcare services that's a that's a significant problem no one wants that to happen so i think that's the that's the biggest thing for us um getting people on these programs as quickly as possible um cutting through red tape uh, the other one i would mention chris is is the the, the issue around scarcity of resource um, we've got to get more people into cybersecurity. Um, everyone is suffering from not having enough skills and finding enough people. So I think we will do our contribution as CyberArk, but that's a that's a broader broader topic. Um, they are the main ones that keep me up at night, and that's what I'm I'm driving with CyberArk. Um, and in terms of events, yeah, so we have more events in Asia Pacific. There's one next week in Singapore. And then we've got one in India by the end of next week. Um, right. um, so we, we are we're not finished with the World Tour yet. We still have a few in Europe. Um, and been, we've already been to the US East Coast and West Coast. And in South America, I think we had one in um, Sao Paulo this week as well. So we're spreading the word, the word, uh, word far and wide because it's a, it's a super important topic for, for many people. I might just take you back to critical infrastructure again. Uh, have you seen an uptake in since the act came out this year? Uh, some of the uh, reporting requirements have now kicked in. Uh, are you seeing an uptake in interest from critical infrastructure owners and operators? We do, yeah. It's, it has taken a little bit of time um, because typically what happens first, the advisories, the consulting companies kick in and, and they make sense of the legislation. They explain that to the boards and the executives. That's the first phase, but now I can see that flowing into tenders. So we've seen a, a whole raft of energy companies coming out with tender processes in the market. They're semi-government, some of them. Um, and I've seen a, I've seen the healthcare organizations pretty alert. I mean, if we, if we're sitting here and looking at just the last three or four weeks, and now we're facing the fact that you know, hundreds of thousands, let's say tens of thousands of people have their health records exposed. If that doesn't sharpen the mind of the healthcare industry, then I don't know what is going to sharpen their minds. Yeah. 
And it's yeah. not just one, it's, uh, it, you know, Australia's seen a um, back-to-back. So definitely uh, there is no real sort of excuse, as you say, it's up to the CEO and the board level now uh, for them all to be on notice. Uh, so look, it's always a pleasure to have you, having you on, Thomas. I think we've had you on a couple of times, actually, uh, but the last time was uh, quite an interesting period. We're now post-pandemic uh, and cyber is just as important. It's carried it all the way through. Uh, so it's not going to go away. And identity security uh, is really at the, at the core uh, of cyber security as well. So Thomas, you can say, uh, Regional Director with CyberArk, great to have you back on our MySec uh, Tech and Sec Weekly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thomas.